morning, everyone. Well, we're only now 23 days away from Christmas and 32 days away from New Year's. But today is a beautiful day. And beautiful in that uh, I just started Medicare yesterday. <laughs> and to some of you, you probably think I'm still a young buck. But for most of you, you're probably saying this guy is old. <laughs> but it is all relative. And I'm just happy to be here to be standing in front of you this morning. And as I mentioned, as Christmas and New Year's approach, the month of December is often thought of as a month to be thankful. It is a happy time where our family members and friends get together to celebrate the holidays. However, the gifts we receive during Christmas divert our attention from, from what we really should be thankful for. The truth is, there are so many things that we just simply take for granted. We are not mindful of the truth until we experience a story that really puts things into perspective. I recently received a book entitled Hands and Feet of the Heart. The book tells a most remarkable story about one woman and how she overcame seemingly impossible disabilities to just live a life. And today's Dharma message describes this journey. Isako Nakamura was born in 1897 in Takayama City, Japan, a town surrounded by the Japan Alps. During the winter season, the temperature in Takayama City would go down to 10 to 15 degrees below zero. When Hisako was two years old, she complained about the pain in her limbs as both her arms and legs had turned black. The doctors discovered Hisako had gangrene and was forced to amputate parts of both her arms and legs in order to save her life. After the operation, flesh left on the stumps of her arms and legs would crack open like pomegranate, exposing her bones, causing severe pain. Because of the pain, her parents would have to carry her at night, walking the streets so that Hisako's crying would not disturb the neighbors. A few, a few years later, because of constant and excruciating pain, the doctors had to saw more of her arms and legs above her elbows and knees. With the loss of her hands and feet, how would Hisako live a normal life that all of us are accustomed to. Her mother remarried after her father passed away when Hisako was four. Hisako was treated like an outcast within her new family. She was not allowed to be seen in public and was denied any sort of education. Her stepfather, stepbrother, and stepsister were ashamed of Hisako for being part of the family. Isako continued to experience pain in her arms and legs, which somehow affected her eyesight and caused her to be temporarily blind. Miracles, miracle, her sight returned after six months. And at the age of 10, her grandmother brought her paper, pencils, a slate, and chalk so that she could learn to write with her mouth. Her education consisted of copying her stepbrother and stepsister's homework. Through strict discipline by her grandmother and mother, Isako learned to use a scissor with her mouth, with her mouth hold a needle in her mouth to knit and sew clothes, and most impressive of all, thread a needle by herself. Isako ate without holding a rice bowl or chopsticks by bending over the bowl of food and eating like a dog. She was mocked by other kids for eating like an animal. And because of those insults, more than ever, 
Isaka was determined to show everyone that she was a human being. At the age of 19, Isaka received a visit from a friend of her deceased father. The visitor suggested that she become an exhibition in a freak show in order to make money, to support herself, and not be a burden to the family. Once Isako became part of the show, she was billed as the Dharma Musume, or the Dharma daughter, with no hands or feet. However, in her mind, she was an artist, and her art consisted of doing needlework, knitting, tying knots, and writing calligraphy. In addition, she learned how to use the abacus, write letters, and perform the most simple acts of the tea ceremony. At this time, Isako discovered the meaning of love and she developed a special relationship with a gangster. Although that relationship did not last, Isako married a man who had taken care of her needs during the early years of her touring. Although she did not love the man, the man did support and care for her. A daughter, Michiko, was born. Two years later, Isako's husband died from tu tuberculosis. Two months later, Isako married again out of necessity to survive. Although her new <coughs> husband drank and fooled around, he promised not to cause her grief. A year later, Isako's second daughter, Tomoko, was born. Unfortunately, tragedy struck again as her husband of two years died from meningitis. A year later, Isako married for a third time in order to provide for her two daughters. Her new husband also had taken care of Isako during her work on the tour. He also drank, gambled, and played around. Although a third daughter, Taeko, was born, she unfortunately passed away from measles within the year. In 1933, Isako divorced her third husband due to his infidelities. Isako, at age 37, married her fourth and final husband. Although nine years younger, her husband loved and took care of Isako for the rest of her life. And one of the highlights of her career was to perform before Emperor Hirohito. She displayed her talents for knitting, sewing, folding paper, and brushing a poem that was first composed by Emperor Hirohito's grandfather, Emperor Meiji. Finally, at the age of 40, Isako quit the tour circuit after 22 years in order to be more of a mother to her two daughters. During and after the war, Isako became president of the Association of the Disabled in Takayama City and would go on to lecture tours before Fujinkai organizations, <coughs> mother's organizations, <coughs> Buddhist groups, temples, disabled groups, schools, and prisons. She also published many well-received articles, such as a her award-winning biography and gave speeches on the NHK radio broadcasting system about her life. But she became a sensation and a national treasure in Japan. Later in her life, Isako suffered from stomach cancer and passed away in 1968 at the age of 71. And during her life, Isako also learned to brush her teeth, wash her face, take a bath, clean house, do laundry, wash rice, use a knife for cutting fish and vegetables, peel vegetables, and use chopsticks to eat. Several decades after her death, correction, several decades before her death, Isako had discovered Jodo Shinshu Buddhism in the late 1930s through the reading of Tanisho, which is a compilation of Shinran Shonin's teachings. 
one particular passage from Tanisha that deeply touched her read, quote, Recite the Nambutsu, Namo Amida Butsu. As Manita said, it means leaving everything to the Buddha, who, regardless of the circumstances, is always holding us in his embrace. So please, just say the Nambutsu, unquote. To Hisako, those words were like rain during a drought, whereby a tiny seed that was dormant in the ground was finally able to peak its head above the surface. Hisako also wrote in part, quote, Shimon Shonin's sacred teaching should be heard and held securely in our hearts. We should look into the mirror of the Dharma and follow the day of the Buddha. Correction again, the way of the Buddha. I am filled with gratitude for the limitless light of compassion that allows me to live strongly and fully so that I will overcome life's difficulties and not resign myself to my fate. <clears throat> the Nembutsu allows me to see myself for what it is, unquote. The light of the Dharma began lighting up her heart and never went out. It was a great source of happiness that allowed Hisako to overcome unimaginable hardships in order to live her life. Hisako also authored a poem entitled, Though Without Hands or Feet. I have condensed the poem to better reflect the depth of her gratitude to the Buddha. Though 60 years without hands or feet, how precious my life that is allowed to live. Because the Buddha's compassionate hands and feet have taken the place of mine, I am surrounded by Buddha's compassion. How peaceful am I? The Buddha accepts me just as I am. Yes, Isaku was the most remarkable human being. And now, whenever I start feeling sorry for myself, or I start to complain about people, things, situations and circumstances, I think about Isaku and others in this world who are less fortunate than I am. It is then when my Dharma eyes open, I am able to see how fortunate I truly am for what I have and what I can do, including still having the use of my hands and feet to walk for exercise, do yard work, iron my shirts, and do the dishes, among other things. Isaku's story will always be a constant reminder for me to be grateful, not only on Thanksgiving or Christmas, but for each and every day of the year. <clears throat> Thank you, Hisako, for the gift of inspiration. Please join me in God's show. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu.